In this video I want to pay attention to an old magazine of France of 1964, April 1964. The name is Radio Constructeur and that uh, means Radio Constructor of course and uh, the subtitle is uh, uh, Construction and Repair. Uh, the first part of the video I want to pay attention to this uh, magazine and halfway I want to pay attention to a few beautiful multi vibrator circuits that are in this uh, magazine. With many variations, I'm fond of the multi vibrator circuit, you can use it everywhere, uh, you can find it also everywhere nowadays and in the past, etc. etc. In computers, in your surely in your smartphone, there is somewhere a multi vibrator circuit, etc. etc. Well, let's look at first at this beautiful old 60 year old magazines. Of course, old analog, analog TV, uh, TVs, television sets, and here. Advertisement for the electrolytic capacitor. Antenna, of course, beautiful antenna. Uh, again, capacitor, not an electrolytic, but an avi aviation capacitor. Of course, had to be very high quality capacitors. Uh, the typical microphone, microphone. A ruban. In the Netherlands we call it a band microphone. There's a very thin aluminium uh, uh, piece of tape here and uh, when sound enters that piece of tape it starts to vibrate and that's picked up by um, that, that uh, piece of metal, very thin aluminium corrugated aluminum is between two very strong magnets and that means that there is an uh, electromagnetic force, electromagnetic induction <coughs> when the, the membrane meets sound. Antenna, of course. Uh, ben Hesselens, batteries, in the 60s and the 70s I surely bought a few of these batteries. Philips oscilloscope advertisement. Uh, of course in those days, 1964, uh, there, was a, there was a translation going from tube amplifiers to transistor amplifiers. Here you see some old um, tube amplifiers of those days. I think the same uh, was in other parts of Europe, same situation also in America I think. Soldering wire, advertisement, the Zephyr radio was a good brand. I once had a Zephyr tube radio in the 1970s. But this is of course a transistor radio. Uh, well, this is not so very clear to me. Uh, a converter for the second uh, TV channels, the higher frequencies in the VHF band. Television started originally, as far as I know, uh, in the lower VHF bands, but this is for the higher VHF bands. Stabilized voltage, voltage supplies from Philips. Beautiful old radios. Well, this is the, the editor's page. <coughs> And this is the uh, publisher. 
always interesting to know, of course, where it <coughs> was published. And I will give that also in the that information in the description. Our problems, no problem. Our problems that were issues uh, discussed in earlier um, magazines. And here are all the solutions for everyone that want, want, wants to do, wanted to do all these calculations again. A measuring uh, device, printed circuit board with tubes, cathode ray tube, again a tuner, VHF tuner for an analog TV, here also tuner for an analog TV. Of course that was in those days uh, necessary. And you can see how they were made. I, I had one such a tuner. It was completely made of brass. Extremely high quality. Um, <coughs> of course it had to do with the that, that the whole the whole unit had to be made as stable and sturdy as possible. Uh, Otherwise, you could not receive the television uh, station in a stable way. Due, due to temperature changes, small movements of components, etc., etc. That also plays now still a role. High voltage um, transformer, here again a VHF tuner. So that were, the f that were the first seven minutes of the video. I now want to go to the multi vibrator page. And that multi vibrator, the, the multi vibrator circuits in this magazine are extremely interesting because they show so many different types of multi vibrators. Standard type, well, I think we all know the standard type of a, of a multi vibrator. Two transistors. One transistor switches the, one, the other one on, and the other one switches the other one off and on. So, this is the article A stable multi vibrators made with transistors. And I want, I don't go to all the calculations, but to the schematics. Um, Again, about the multi vibrator, you can find them everywhere. Important to tell that I think these uh, circuits in this magazine were made with germanium transistors. You can surely use nowadays uh, silicon transistors. Uh, they have a somewhat higher barrier voltage, so a germanium transistor in general it oscillates easier, but you have to. I think you have to work now with uh, silicon transistors. This is the basic schematic. You can use PMP and NPN transistors. These transistors are PMP transistors. In those days there were more or less only PMP transistors. Uh, NPN transistors were more difficult to make. So anyway you can change here um, the type of transistor. And the, the, whether it is NPN or PNP. With PMP, the minus must go to the collector, and with NPN, the positive must go to the collector. That's very important. So you have to reverse the power supply leads when you want to use NPN transistors. This is the most basic circuit, standard circuit. Here is sortie, that means out, and when you want to drive something, use here a, a capacitor. Not uh, always necessary. Uh, when you want to drive something in DC terms, there's no separation capacitor necessary. But when you want to drive, uh, well, something else, you must use, can use here a separation capacitor. Good value is between 100 nanofarad. And 470 nanofarad. That's the most basic circuit. Um, it's the second circuit. 
and it's figure 6 and the description tells us with two um, separate parts here, voltage dividers, you can get a better waveform. Good thing is here that the components values are showed. So this can give a better waveform. Again, you can use an ambient transistor and reverse the supply voltage. I don't want to go to all these oscilloscope views. It will be um, the video will be too long. Figure four. Uh, with there are two potentiometers here. With one of them, you can uh, set the frequency with P1, and with P2, you can set the duty cycle. Very interesting. I wish I had enough time to make them all on the breadboard or not. Here, oh, well, that was not good. I have to be quick a little bit. So, this was that other circuit, and the description tells us that thanks to a third transistor, we can get to much higher frequencies or very high frequencies. Of course, that will also depend on the type of transistor, but in all these circuits, my advice is use a BC547 or that is NPN and when you need a PNP transistor use its brother or sister and that is the BC557. Their amplification factor is approximately 300. It's a stable transistor, it's a so-called MESA transistor, it has unique properties and it's a kind of transistor that always works. Uh, another schematic of a multivibrator and here in the description is told that with the use of diodes you can get to very sharp uh, square waves. And there are more articles about this issue, the use of diodes, but anyway I cannot go too deep in that matter. Try it, test it, etc, etc. It's very interesting. And here another schematic uh, where the uh, description tells us that only one capacitor is used here to make a certain frequency, of course related to this resistor. For all these circuits uh, there is an important rule of thumb. When you change the values of the resistors or the capacitors there will be substantial changes in the frequency or in the duty cycle. That also makes it interesting for experiments. Figure 12. Uh, the description tells that when this transistor does not get property properly into saturation, you can use here a voltage divider. And that's done here, and that is R3 and R4. Also an interesting circuit to do experiments with. And here more or less the final circuit, and the description tells us that with this setup, with relatively small capacitors, you can go to quite low frequencies. That's a property of this multivibrator. I have a few minutes, I have to be quick. Better waveforms can be generated with this circuit. That tells us the description. Another version of a multivibrator with a complementary transistors. PMP and NPN and you can set the frequency with the potentiometer and here a multivibrator that works with a capacitor between the two emitters. That's also very interesting. Uh, this is the author 
and it is published here. April 1964, radio constructor, etc. etc. So I will put the camera down now and we can look further in the book, in the magazine. And surely on a sudden, sudden moment the camera will stop anyway. So I'm telling what is possible to tell till my camera automatically stops. Thanks for watching. Um, how you can make coils with all kinds of forms for VHF and FM. Nowadays a little bit difficult to find when you want to make your cores, your coils uh, yourself. Uh, but there are specialized radio uh, shops where it's still possible to buy um, these cores. Pick up element. I think it had to be home brew, home made. Quite interesting. I think the tone arm is made of wood. Don't know that exactly anyway. Advertisement for a DVM. Not a DVM, a tube voltmeter. As far as I can see. And more advertisements of radios of those days. Beautiful old radio. Miniature potentiometer. Well, I think I have to stop. Again, thanks for watching. Hope it was a little bit interesting. And all these multivibrator, A stable multivibrators, well, they they are a sea to drink, and you can spend days uh, on very interesting experiments, and they are very good usable for all kinds of practical uh, situations. For instance, driver, driving a MOSFET. You can drive a MOSFET with a multivibrator. In that case you can set the duty cycle and the frequency to the ideal point where, point where that MOSFET works at its best, etc. Thanks for watching.